praying and just believing God for what he's going to do today in this place. Amen. Come on, pray with me. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for, for what you're doing, Lord, in this place today, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in the hearts of men in this hour. So, Father, we just put our eyes on you today, Jesus. God, we are focused on you and believing, Lord, for what you're going to do in our hearts, God, and what you're going to do through us today. So, Father, we exalt you today, Jesus. We put you in your right place, Jesus, as Lord of all. And, God, we just ask you to come and move in our midst today, God. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together.
seas into highways you're the only one who can you turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the
took a breath, you breathed your life to me. You have been so, so
No lie, you won't tear down. You're coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. You're coming after me.
room with us. We thank you, Lord, that you poured out your love for us, Father, when you sent your son, Jesus. And Jesus, we just stand in awe of you this morning, in awe of your goodness, in awe of your perfect love. We want to thank you that you made a way for us, that you went before us, we want to thank you for that this morning. This morning, as I was reading, I thought this was the perfect scripture for, for today. And it was Paul, he was talking to the Ephesians, and he was talking about the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all of its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled overflowing with the fullness of God. How many of you need the overflowing goodness of God in your life today? I know that I do, so let's just receive it today. Father, we thank you for your overflowing goodness 
that you desire, that it's far-reaching, that it's all-inclusive. It doesn't come with, with questions, and it doesn't come with, with, with what-ifs and what-ands. It comes liberally, Lord. It comes when you sent your Son for us. Lord, you don't withhold anything from us because we're your children. And so, Lord, we ask that you would let it overflow in us and through us today. And no matter where you are, I think about that scripture. It says that it's far-reaching. And so wherever or whatever is going on in your life right now, just know that his love is far-reaching. It transcends. And, Lord, we just want to thank you for that this morning. And Lord, we pray that you would send your love to the brokenhearted today. Send your love to the broken and the needy and those who are lost in our city and in our nation today. Father, we pray that you would reach to the darkest places and extend the light and the love of God. I pray this morning all over this region, Lord, those who are empty and those who are lonely and those who are broken, we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to send your precious love and encouragement to them today. I pray for those who are suicidal and those who are broken, Lord. I pray and I declare hope to those situations today. I declare that that the heaviness would shift off today and the love of God would come in like a raging river and flood their homes, flood their minds today, Lord. And we just thank you for that. It's only you who can do that, God. You and only you. And we want to thank you for that this morning and bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. No. So today is Valentine's Day, February 14th. And so I went my pretty much my whole life up until probably about last year knowing or thinking that Valentine's Day was just a holiday. Well, I found out that there was actually somebody named St. Valentine. Did you guys know that? Maybe some of you may have. That there's actually a story and a whole thing about St. Valentine's that I do not know. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of a long story. So I'm going to tell you kind of in short the story of St. Valentine, okay? So years and years ago, there was a ruler. His name was Claudius II. And Claudius II was also known as a tyrant ruler. He loved to go to war. He, he loved to battle. He was just a big man's man, but I'm not too sure if he followed the ways of God from my understanding. We'll find out in the story. So he was, uh, his, his, his armies were out fighting one, one day, and they came, in, came back in, and his commander-in-chief of the army came to him to report, and, and Claudius was like, did we win? How did the war go? And, I mean, he, he walked in, and he was all battle-worn. He's like, he's like they, they tore us up. They beat us up, and Claudius was furious. He's like, what happened? What's going on? And he, the commander-in-chief told him, he said, well, you keep putting us in these battles, and all of our men are dying off. Our numbers are down. We're steadily surrounded, and it's, I mean, we're getting beat. We don't have any soldiers left. And he said, okay, so we're going to do, we're going to do a recruitment. So he put this whole recruitment thing together, and he had his commander, his chief, and, and his top fellows to go out and set up in the town square. So it was just like they were trying to recruit for the military today. So you can just envision that. Think of it somewhat in that way. So they sat there all day, and no one came to sign up. They're sitting there and like, oh my gosh, and that this is not happening. What's going on? Well, there was some gentleman that was standing on the road beside them. So they got up from their little recruitment station they had made, and they walked to them. It was like, hey, you guys want to come join Claudius, uh, Claudius's uh, army? And they're like, no way. No, we don't want to do that. Well, why not? Well, we want to stay home with our families. We love our wives and our kids, and we don't want to. We know that he's a man of war, and we will surely die if we go if we join. I mean, look at all the people. They come back. They leave a whole a lot of people come back. Just few. We're not going to do that. We love our family too much. So the commander in chief, and they were like, uh, okay. So they went back to Claudius, and Claudius is excited. He's like, so what happened? How many people did my army gain today? And they were like, crickets. He was ridiculously so mad, so mad, that he made a rule. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm making a ruling. I'm just enough of this love stuff. He said, as of now, there's no more marriage. So he put a halt to marriages, literally. He said, okay, from here out, no more marriage. So you can only imagine the people that were in love that had planned to get married in the future, all of these people that were lovey-dovey, they were probably pretty upset. 
Well, in comes this fellow named St. Valentine on the scene. St. Valentine was a Christian priest, and he was a man of God. He knew the word, and he believed in, and that marriage was ordained of God. So what he was doing, he took matters in his own hands, and he started going to people's house and, and marrying people under the radar, even to the point of getting them huddled up in a close circle in, in their living room and, and whispering their nuptials just to get them married. Right. Well, this went on for a little while, and eventually Claudius II caught wind of it. So he sends for Valentine, and he says, Valentine, come here. So he, Valentine approached him, and he was like, are you doing this? And Valentine's, yes, I am doing that. And Claudius even gave him a chance. He said, I'll tell you what, if you will stop doing that, I will let you go. And, and St. Valentine was like, no, this is God-ordained. This, it compares with the word. I'm supposed to be doing it, and you're wrong for that. I'm, I will keep on. He says, okay. So he threw him in prison. And he, they're to stay to rot until his day of death. So time passed on, and the people of the town knew what Claudius was about. He was a man of God, and they, he had married so many people. So all these people that believed in God and, and matrimony were outside of his cell window, and they were throwing roses and flowers. They, would, they were out there, and they were praying for him, and they would throw flowers in there at him. So roses and flowers, Valentine's Day. You get the picture. Okay, so the jailer, his overseer, came to him one day and he, he said, Valentine, he said, I have a daughter. She's very smart, but she's blind. And I, I know that you're a man of God. I want her to know the word. So he said, if I bring her to you, will you teach her the Holy Bible, teach her the word of God? And he said, I know I'm not supposed to be doing this, but I believe, I believe in what you're doing in the sanctity of marriage. And uh, Valentine said, sure. So he started bringing his daughter periodically to visit Valentine. And uh, they, they, found a relationship and eventually he prayed for her and her eyes she received her sight God healed her yeah. and um, so Tom rocks on she learned, learned the word of God and everything and became a student of the word and then his day of reckoning came Claudius called for him he said all right it's time come so he he went to Claudius and uh, the king gave him one more chance he said I will turn you loose set you free if you promise not to do this again and he wasn't hearing it. So he ends up being a martyr for the cause of love and for, for matrimony and for the things that God set in place, like marriage and love. So Claudius said, all right, he told his commander in chief, he said, take him out to the, uh, the outpost of, of the gates, the front of the city, and he said, make an example of him, club him to death. So they sent him back to, uh, to his uh, jail cell for a little while. And while he was there, he wrote a letter to his beloved and at the end of the letter, it said that he actually signed the letter, Love Your Valentine. Valentine's Day, you get it? <laughs> anyway, so anyway, uh, they took him out there and they clubbed him to death in the street and made an example of him, right? And the day that he died was February 14th, the day that we know as Valentine's Day. Okay, so I was one of those people that did not hear that story until this week, literally this week. And I am also one of those people that boycotted Valentine's Day. You know, one of those people that said, this is a commercial thing. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna buy Valentine's. I don't, we don't need to celebrate Valentine's Day because we love each other all the time. And we don't, you know, I was one of those people. Not anymore. I am celebrating Valentine's Day every year, I promise. But anyway, okay, so. This week, when I heard that story, um, I was really thinking about it, and isn't it typical of Satan to try to, um, oh, sorry, to try to separate marriages or to try to keep love out of the picture? And on top of that, to um, he was going to send them to war. I was really thinking about that, and. He, he not only wanted to get rid of love, he was going to send them to war. And I thought, well, that's typical. And um, I thought that was pretty cool. But I thought that story was really cool. Okay, so I want to share a little bit about mine and Tim's testimony. And um, I'm going to tell the short version because most of you have heard it, but I do have a point. So anyway, okay. A lot of people think that Tim and I have been married 20 plus years, but we haven't. We were married five years last month. And... Um, 
I was previously married before Tim. I was married uh, for 12, almost 13 years, and um, we had four children, and in 2012, he committed suicide, and then that made me a single widowed mother, and I was a single widowed mother for years, and, um, and then Tim. As of this month, I am eight years sober, ex-homeless drug addict. That's awesome. Eight years. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Well, so five years ago, actually six years ago, um, around a little over five, uh, Mark and Crystal Shermer asked me, um, they asked me to go to church with them. It had been years since my kids and I had gone to church. We just kind of... stayed home. We didn't, we didn't go anywhere, do anything. And we were, um, we were just sad. (laughs) And we, they asked us to go to church and we did. We thought, you know, let's go. So we tried. We went one Sunday with them and then we went again. We went again. We went again. We loved it. And that is where I met Tim. And one day he texted me, he messaged me, (laughs) <laughs> Facebook messaged me, and um, we just started talking. And one of the questions that he asked me, we, we used to go back and forth with questions. And one of the questions, there's a couple of questions that I'm going to tell you he asked. One of them was, um, he said, did you used to go to Red Lake School? And I said, yes. And I, I said, why? It's not a creeper, I promise. <laughs> no creeper. Sure. And he said, um, that he did too, and FYI, he's three years younger than me. But he said, I used to too, and I remember these two little girls that were sitting on the front of the bus when I was small. We were, I was small, and he said, I remember these two little girls that were sitting on the front of the bus, and they would sing, I am a C, I am a C-H, I am a C-H-R-I-S-C-I-N, that song. And he said, and I was on the back of the bus, and that song has stuck with me my whole life. And, of course, I'm on the other end of the phone going, <laughs> who is this guy? You know, that is so cool. That is so amazing. That, that I was 11 when that happened. And um, here he is telling me this story. And so, and then another one of his, um, I'm going to get back to that. And so uh, another one of the things he asked me was, what was one of my favorite desserts? Well, one of my favorite desserts is cherry pie filling. So, and that's because my mom put it in my stocking growing up my whole life. I would eat it out of the can. Okay. So, anyway, um, three weeks later, and yes, I said three weeks, this man shows up on my doorstep with a can of cherry pie filling and asks me to marry him. This is my engagement ring, my little, my literal engagement ring. This is it, the one, and it does not fit on my finger. Um, but I love it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, so we got married three weeks and three days later. And um, so anyway, I am telling you these stories because, first I want to read Psalm 139, 16. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. And I told you all of these stories, these two stories, because I think it is amazing how detailed God is, how he loves us so much that even those small details like sitting on the bus when I'm 11 years old. (laughs) That mattered. You know, I, I was 11 and I sang that song and I didn't think about that for 30 years. And he, and he knew at that moment when I was singing that song that Tim not only was going to remember that 30 years later, but Tim needed to hear that song in that moment and was going to carry it with him throughout his life and was going to think about it even on his journey, and he knew that Tim was going to be on the journey that he was on and was going to remember that song throughout his journey. So I was thinking, 
especially this week, oh my gosh, he is so detailed. And how amazing that is. Even the cherry pie feeling. I got engaged with a can of cherry pie feeling. <laughs> this is amazing. It is so romantic and so amazing. And he cares. He cares about my heart so much that he knows I'm a romantic. And I don't need diamonds or pearls or gigantic houses or awesome cars. I needed this. And how amazing is that? He loves me that much to where he gave me a man that was going to bring me a can of cherry pie feeling. And that healed so much in my life. When he showed up on my doorstep with a can of cherry pie feeling, so much sadness fell away from me, from my life. So much hope came. So much joy came. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, okay, I'm going to be quiet now. <laughs> All right, so I absolutely, I love that her and her sister, the, the love that her and her sister had for God back then, and all the way back in middle school, it shined so bright that it made an impact on me my whole life up until today, just singing that little song, because the love that, that they showed for God and living out loud, it was all based from love. Because they, they did that, that made an impact on me. So, okay, so real talk. Getting married after dating for three weeks and three days had a tendency to expose a, a lot of baggage that we all, us and the children, all of them, all 20 of them, had, <laughs> had from, from our past six. We love you all. Okay, but we, we found ourselves in many speed bumps, walls, and even almost a couple of ditches a few times. I mean, it's kind of inevitable bringing this type of traumatic and dramatic things together, you know. But one key thing that we've learned is this, is that you have to set yourself aside and focus on the one that you love and the ones that you love. Because when you do that, no matter what the situation, when you do that, you are honestly making room for authentic love to organically happen. And it's not, it's not pushed. So super, super important, always to set yourself aside and focus on the one that you're loving. So you see that we were and we are still in a process. And you're probably possibly thinking, how in the world do they navigate through all of this stuff or mess or whatever word you want to insert in that blank? And, I mean, all the odds are stacked against this family. Like, literally, I mean, textbook, science-wise, I mean, I mean, there were doctors that were saying things over their situation, said, oh, well, y'all should be right here. This is not going to work out for y'all. Y'all are going to deal with this. And I had doctors and people that looked at me and said, no, you're, you're going to end up dead. All kinds of negativity. So when you put all that together, it takes the love of God. And there's absolutely no way that this will work out without the love of God and without love in it. But I'll tell you how it works. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, the word says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and does not keep a record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but it rejoices whenever the truth wins. Love never gives up, love never loses faith, and it's always hopeful, and it endures through every circumstances. So how are we, how are we, are we doing this right now? We're building our relationship and our home around, in and on and around love that comes from God. The scripture that I, that I just read are all the attributes of God's love for us, as well as how we're supposed to love our spouses and people in general, the people that we come in contact with at church, at, at work, in the grocery store, wherever, just to love people. But that's one of the things that still gets me today is that the, the kindness that God had for us, that he loves us so much that he sent his only son, that he didn't have to do that. What greater love can, could that be that someone left his home in heaven to come here to die for us, for people that lived like I did. And it, blo it literally blows my mind. <laughs> but his love never fails, and his kindness is amazing. And what better could, example could we have to love people than the example that God set for us in the scripture here in First Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. There's so many scriptures about love in, in the Bible, but that's some of my favorite. But we all know that God wins, right? In every situation, God wins, period. He is the first and the last, and he wins. So if God is love, then like, like Carmen said, love wins every time. And starting today, 
I challenge you all to go out and try to outlove people. Try to outlove someone. Set yourself aside and try to outlove them. No matter what the reply is, outlove them. Be blessed. One of the things my dad said um, when we got married, he said the only advice that he could give me was that every single day try to outlove each other. And anyway, I just had to share that because he just said that. So anyway, that was the best advice I ever got. And I'm not sharing my cherry pie filling. <laughs> All right. Well, that was pretty awesome. If this video goes viral, you buy some stock and cherry pie filling and it'll skyrocket. You know, that was, that was so good. And I didn't realize, but I was actually at Tim's bachelor party. Because right before they got married, we were at a daddy-daughter dance. And uh, I said, hey, y'all want to go get some coffee or hang out? And he's like, no, I got some other stuff we want to do. So <laughs> I didn't know. So on uh, this great day of love, I want to talk about the love of God. And probably about three weeks ago, I was walking around the sanctuary. And this is why I felt the, the, the Lord just kept saying to me, people don't understand my love. People don't understand my love. And I just kept walking around praying. I just kept hearing the Lord say, people do not understand my love. And I'm like, whoa, okay, what do you mean to, what do, you mean to do about it? And I, so I just started praying about it. And, you know, we know John 3, 16, for we know this is how much God loved the world that he gave his, his one and only son, his unique son as a gift. So now that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting love. Life, You know, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to show love, to show us the way. And a lot of times we just say that or have it on a bumper sticker or a trip, but when you really stop to think about it, I mean, think, Ezra, come here, son. Come here, son. All right. This is my only son, and I love this guy. I love this guy so much. I wouldn't give this guy for none of y'all, Okay. I like this guy, and we like watching Avengers. But what you got to understand is, is that God gave his only son. Now, think about that. That's a, that's a lot of love. Dude, you did great. And go sit back down. Bobby. All right. <laughs> think about it. His only begotten son. And when you think about the reality of it, that is a lot of love. And so I was praying the Lord. This is what I, I felt he really wanted me to share with you, to tell people they need to learn how to get baptized in love. Okay, now I'm talking about baptize, go under the water, completely submerged in the water. That is how much love I'm talking about. Completely just saturated with the love of God. Okay, Romans 5 and 8. But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, this is what's crazy. If you're if you're hiring people to work for you. You don't find somebody that knows nothing about your business, you know, but, but this is what Christ did. He came for the ones that really knew nothing about the kingdom because he came to, to show the way. And what you got to understand is, is, is God gave his only son for people who had not accepted him yet. Let, 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 let that sink in. That he, he did that knowing what his son was going to offer. That, that is the love of God. First John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. Have you ever seen somebody who needed something really bad and once they got it, they liked it, but then they wouldn't share it with anybody? The reason that we love and we show love and we give love is because God first offered us love. And, and a lot of times in the busyness of life, that's one thing that we do not give. I'm talking to myself, is that, that you're so busy with everything, you forget the primary principle, the foundation of everything that we have, and that is the love of God. And when you're standing on the foundation of the love of God in your life, you'll be baptized in the complete love of God. Now, I don't know if you're busy in life, but I'm busy sometimes, and I'm so busy sometimes, I forget about that the love of God is just so basic to where, if you've noticed, there's a lot of homeless people that have been on, on the streets by all, all of the red lights recently, and I have made it a, a point to be able to stop and pull over it and like literally stop at a green light to make sure it's red just to get to talk to somebody. And I saw one of my friends who stopped the other day and went out, and so what the Lord has been speaking to me about is show love to everybody. 
and to really slow down in life, which is extremely hard for me, but to slow down from busyness of life and start loving on people. Every person in this world has a need. Find a need, fill a need. It might be $10 to somebody. It might be 10 minutes. It might be somebody, they just want you to do something kind for them. And so some of the people, and, and this is, is, is funny, but th- there are people that I know that are a lot more, they have a lot more finances than me, and the Lord has told me to do stuff for them. And when I've done stuff for them, their reaction was better than anything you could ever imagine because they said people don't think I have needs, but I need love just as much as anybody. So when I remember one time when I was, I was young, there was a guy who used to love to give the, the handshakes, the holy handshakes. And so he would always go around, and everybody wanted to shake his hand. <laughs> okay, because he was holy. And uh, he would shake everybody's hand. Well, one day I had a $20 bill, which was a whole lot to me. And the Lord said, go give him a holy handshake. And I said, okay. okay. So I walked up. I didn't know how to do it. And it was kind of slipping out. And I like, gave him a holy handshake. And he started crying in the middle of church, a grown man. And uh, I was like, why are you crying? He said, nobody ever does anything nice for me because people think I don't need it. The people that you think that don't need it are the ones that probably need it the most. And so we're going to just be baptized. See, when you're baptized in love, it's just going to go. Like, you know, the Pentecostals, we like to say, we're baptized in fire. If you're really baptized in fire, everywhere you go, the fire is going to be upon you. To be able to show love everywhere you go. Galatians 2 and 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Okay, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So if we are no longer living in the flesh and we are living in the spirit and the love of God, our whole lives and our whole demeanor should change. The, the other day, someone asked me a question and my first thought in the flesh was, oh, that's going to inconvenience me to a great degree. And then, you know how the Holy Spirit does. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I got you. I, I, Galatians 2.20, I know what you're talking about. Okay, and then so I did what I, was, I needed to do, but I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it at all, I'll be honest. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit through love was pushing me. No, 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 no. Listen, Joe, it's no longer you. It's him. And so when he leads you to do something, do it in all of love. And that's why we need the fire of God, because the fire of God consumes what is dead. <laughs> when the flesh doesn't want to do it, it'll consume it, so you will come forth and do it out of love. 1 John 4, 17 through 19. Those who are, oh, first of all, I want to thank y'all for making it on the blizzard of 2021 today. I want to thank you. This is where my, my a, f- a few different people were going to help do some things, but I meant because of the inches and, and inches uh, of snow and ice, they couldn't make it. But First John four seventeen nineteen. Those who are loved by God, let His love continually pour from them to one another, because God is love. Everyone who loves his father by God and experiences the intimate knowledge of Him, the one who does not love has not yet known the love of God. For God is love. So let me ask you. I ask myself this all the time, but. Really think about this. Do you do something? This is something I try to do every day of my life. I do something for somebody who can't do anything back in return. Every day, it's just a part of who I am. It's um, sometimes the Lord will remind me of it. But the Lord has has told me years ago to do that. Make a point in your life to show my love to somebody who can't do anything back for you. And then and it says, the light of God's love shines within us when he has sent his, his matchless son into the world so we might live through him. This is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love, not ours. He proved this by sending his son and by, by the pleasing sacrifice offering to completely take away our sins, delightfully loved ones. And I'm going to go down to verse uh, 14. Moreover, we have seen this with our own eyes that we can testify to the truth of the Father God who has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Those who give thanks to Jesus, the Son of God, lives in God and God lives in them. Have you ever just seen somebody that you can just actually say, I can tell that God dwells with them. They have a personal relationship with 
the Lord. And, and that's what I want to be around, people who love God. 1 John four sixteen, and it says, we have come into this intimate experience with God's love. Okay, now if you have really, 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 really experienced God's love and been baptized in love, you will act differently. Like one time Malachi told me, she said, hey, Dad, you haven't prayed a whole lot today, have you? And I said, no, I've been busy. This is years ago. I said, why? She said, well, (laughs) it shows. And so when I get into the place of prayer, it's just the love of God flows. Why? Because you're, 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 you're baptized in love. And so there's times, some of y'all just need a little more prayer. But when you're baptized and submersed in the love of God, how can you not read 1 John 4 and not just think about the love of God? It is the love of God that completely passes everything in our, in our life. And then it goes on to say at the end of verse 16, it says, And we trust in the love that he has for us. Once again, God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God, and God's love lives their love, his love through them. By living in God, love has brought us into a full expression in us so that, that we may fearfully face the day of judgment because all of Jesus is now, and so we are now in the world. And I'm telling you, the way the world is right now, you need to be in love more than ever. I don't mean like we in love. I mean, that's good. But I'm saying we, you need to be in love. You need to be baptized in love. Now, 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 let me give you your hard homework assignment. This week, somebody may come up to you, and they ain't got no love in them. If you are baptized, some of y'all are thinking about work on Monday. Um, when you are baptized in love, you don't have to react back to the way that they responded to you. When, I mean, oh, my goodness. It's, whenever I preach something, I'm tested on it. Uh, it seems the next week. And so I'm going to walk around like, so if y'all hear me just speaking in tongues, y- y'all know I'm just trying to be in love. And so and, and when you're in love, you don't have to respond back. And it's hard for a lot of people, but I want some of you to know the reason you got the job and the promotion and where you're at is, and what you're doing is because God needs his love. Somebody baptized in that love, somebody that is in there doing that. And, and listen, the, the, nobody can take the love of God from you. And so when you're in love and somebody tries to pull you out of the love of God, no, you just stay baptized. You just stay in that place. And you're just like, no, I'm not getting, you are not worth me getting out of the love of God. I am not walking out of this place I'm at because I've got too much inside of me. Verse 18, it says, love never brings fear for fear is always related to punishment. And this is what I felt the Lord spoke to me when he said, people don't understand my love. When you understand the true love of God, that there's no punishment in it. And so this is something that, that I do on a regular basis. When uh, things are going on in the world, I like to come and I sit down right here on this spot and I say, God, what are you doing? God, what are you saying? And God, I need to feel your love. And I say, Lord, can you wrap your love around me like a winter coat? like a warm blanket. I mean, God, I, I, need to be, I need to be baptized in love. I need to stay in your love but because I don't understand. And hey, in this day and age in America, there's a lot of things that a lot of people are looking at and say, I don't understand what is going on. But when I pray, I, I'm not scared. I'm not fearful. I'm extremely excited because I don't know what's going on, but something good is about to happen in America. You know, the, when you're going on a vacation, and unfortunately you have to drive, and you're like, no, we're not there. Just hang on. It's going to be good. No, we're not there. It's going to be good. Hey, just sit back. Don't ask again, all right? It's going to be good. We're going to get there. You're going to have a blast. But, you know, we're, we're not there yet. And a lot of times I'm like, God, I feel something good is coming. And I accidentally saw a few minutes of the news, and, oh, Lord, I had to lay hands and pray for myself and get in love. And, but God's got something. That's how you are in life. When people come and criticism comes at you, when you're looking at your life and things aren't lining out the way that that you think they should be going, what do you do? You get in that place of prayer and you get in. I call it like the bubble. You just get in in, in the place of love with the Lord and you understand the love of God and you'll say, okay, I'm good. 
I don't understand everything in this world, but what is the scripture I just read? It talks about the world, that the world is out there, and you know how the world is today. They three kinds of crazy out there. But the thing is, when you're kingdom and you're kingdom-minded, you have a kingdom love. You're not thinking like the world thinks. People in the world, they don't understand the, the kingdom of God and what the Lord is doing. That's why Jesus was rejected so much. But, but Jesus, he gave his life for the ones that actually came to persecute him because he was fixed in the Father's love. And when you understand the love of a father, I remember, you know, there's times that, that Big Nanny, she lied to me, but she said, oh, this is about to hurt me more than, than it's going to hurt you. She enjoyed spanking me, but boy, she'll wear me out. And, uh, and she said, I'm doing it for your own good. I had no idea what she was, what was talking about, but, you know, now, later in life, I think, oh, I understood my discipline. I understood what was going on. There's things you look right now at the world that's going on. You don't understand what's going on, but I'm telling you, it's going to be okay. And everything that you go through in life, you're going to be okay. Romans 8, 39, there is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through the Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Listen, friends, you got to understand this. There is nothing in the world that can ever pull you out of the love of God. And there's nothing you can ever do to make God love you more. Um, I remember one time we were uh, playing t-ball with the girls and this one, one idiot dad stood up there and said hey boy make sure you get a home run to make me proud I remember I looked at my kids I said hey I'm always gonna be proud of you and the little boy got a sing on he came back and I said hey buddy man that was a you know that was a good we're talking he said well now my dad's not proud of me and I said I'm gonna tell you what you know God's always proud of you and so you got to understand that in that that God, some people that they always feel like I got to do this or I got to do that or I have to do this. Listen, God loves you. And this is something I always say. God loves you and he has a plan for your life. I don't care where you're at. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care how you may feel that you have messed anything up. God loves you. And, and I'm going to tell you about America. God has a plan. God always has a plan. And whenever people can't figure out a plan, they try to conjure up a plan. But let me tell you, God Almighty has a plan for this nation. God has a plan for you, and it is centered in the love of God. 1 Corinthians 13, 4, it says, love is large. Love is large, and it is patient. Love is gentle and, and consistent and kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessings come to someone else. Listen. I want you, one of the greatest things you can ever do in life is celebrate others when they get victory. Whenever they get blessed, whenever they get married, whenever something happens to them, you celebrate, uh, your time is coming. And, and when it is, it is time, I love when people are like a family because they just celebrate one another. Psalms 5, 11 and 12. But, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. What is that refuge? It is that in that place, being baptized in love completely. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord in the good days. Rejoice in the Lord in the bad days. Rejoice in the Lord when you're in Texas or Arkansas and it's 20 degrees and it's sleeting outside right now. Rejoice in the Lord. Just rejoice in the Lord all the days of your life. And somebody asked me one time, said, do you ever have a bad day? I said, yeah, but, but, but I choose to rejoice in the Lord. I choose to speak forth things that I know are coming. I choose to speak forth the positive things, Philippians 4 and 8, because I live in the love of God. There's nothing I can do to ever take away my destiny. There's nothing ever I can do to mess up so bad that I lose the love of God. It is the love of God. And that's what draws people, not just to repentance, as the word says, but it draws them into the things that he has for them. So never lose the mindset of, of the love of God. That's where, where doubters and critics come in and try to pull you away from that. When you are in him, you are fixed in him. Y'all with me on that? And then it says, spread your protection over them that all who loves your name may be filled with joy for your blessing is the goodness of the Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. The shield of love, it's like, it's like I was talking about. It is a protection. What is that? When you have an intimate relationship with the Lord, the world cannot penetrate you. 
The world cannot knock you out of what you're called to do. When Nehemiah was building the wall and Simba and Tobiah were like, come down here. He said, I can't. I got a word from the Lord. I am building. I will not come down. I will not give in to what you're saying. I won't give in to your threats. Why? Because the shield of God's love was before him. And now here is the, the thing that a lot of people do because, you know, I got to talk about building something in dreams and destiny. A lot of people are scared of everything that's going on. But if they realize that God had a shield in front of them, they could build because they're protected. People are so scared and worried about things that are going on, they're not building anything. I'm telling you, this is a time and this is a season that God's hand is upon people to do what he has called you to do. Amen? Amen. All right. Psalms 36, 5 and a 7. Your unfailing love, O God, is as vast as the heavens. Two things. Y'all think heavens are pretty vast? Yeah, his love's greater. Okay? So when you realize that, your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. That's a long way. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your justice, there's a word for today, your justice just like the ocean's depths. So to the depths of the bottom of the ocean, the justice of God is just as great. Okay, the justice of God is there. So whenever someone does something or, or comes at you or hurts your feelings, don't worry about it. The love of God is the justice of God and is going to take care of everything. You don't have to say a word back. You just smile and just let the justice of God take care of everything. And remember, on your enemies, don't say smite them, Lord, because he actually loves them too. So let me tell you the hardest prayer for people to pray, and it's the greatest prayer to pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so you got to pray that over, over people. I was doing a video the other day for YouTube, and one of the things I told people is, is take your denomination filter off, your political filter off, take your opinion filter off. That's a big one. And, uh, and pray over situations. Your kingdom come, your will be done in Texarkana as it is in heaven over your life as it is in heaven over your business and watch what starts to happen because have you ever been praying and the Holy Spirit be like Psst, that doesn't align with my will are y'all having that's just me okay okay my bad but I, I pray that the Lord says no 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 pray my kingdom to come in that situation and then the kingdom would come and guess what it wasn't like I thought it was but it was filled with what the love of God and then it goes on to say in Psalms 36, 6, you care for people and animals alike. He, God even likes animals. Oh, Lord, how precious is your unfailing love, oh, God. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. All humanity. God has a plan. Get baptized in his love and everything is going to work out. My philosophy in life, pray like it all depends on God and work like it all depends on you. Do whatever the Lord has called you to do. And this is kind of how I felt we should close today. They're going to do a song, something about the love of God, I'm sure. And I just want us to sit in the presence of the Lord. And this is, this is a scripture that I love. Philippians 4 and 8, it says, Think upon the things that are good, that are noble, that are just, that are praiseworthy. Then this is the last part of this scripture, okay? It says, meditate on these things. When I think about meditating, I'm thinking, for some reason, I saw two palm trees in a hammock. You know, just the, the breeze going through and, and a cup of coffee in my hand. And just like, just sitting there with my mind clear and the Lord just speaking. Yours may be in the woods or I don't know where it may be, your prayer room. But let's just sit here for a minute and I just pray. And I'm going to pray over you. And if you want prayer, we'll have some people up here for prayer. But that the love of God and the peace of God that passes all understanding, all knowledge will come upon you. And I've, I just want to declare over you that for the rest of 2021, you are going to have the love of God and the peace of God over your life like never before. When I was younger, I would, I would stress out about everything. And then emotionally, I would get unstable and I didn't know what to do. And I'd get fearful and angry. And, but you know what? 
whenever you understand that the love of God would just be able to come over, baptize, and wash everything away. Now, if there's something big I have to make a decision on, I can go to bed and not even worry about it because I've done my part, and I can only do what JoJo can do, and I let God do what he needs to do. And I need to make sure that I stay in the love of God and I don't get out there in worryville and stressed out and all of this other stuff, but I stay in there. So just always remember this. In life, when you don't know what to do, just say, God, I want to pull away and I want to make sure that I am completely submerged and baptized in your love. I need your presence to come in and wrap around me like a winter blanket, like a winter coat. Just, I need you, God. I need clarity. I need away from confusion. Lord, I need some answers. I don't know, Lord. Just calm my spirit and my soul. When you do that, the love of God will just flow in there. And you know what? I do this every single day. Because I know that that if I want to accomplish my will to the degree that God has spoken to me about, I've got to stay in the love of God. Y'all tracking with me? good so father god i declare your love god multiple times i read these scriptures that said god is love i just pray that you baptize us all today in the love of god that we release oppression depression if we need to forgive people if we're anxious if we have uh, an insecurity if we have a fear let it go it's 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 we're baptizing the love of god We're covered by the love of God. The love of God is our portion. And Lord, I also pray that as we leave today and we go out into the world this week, that we will see people with the eyes of God, with the love of Christ. Just like as Tim was telling the story about St. Valentine, how he prayed for this, the jailer's daughter, and she she saw that we have compassion on people that, that have physical infirmities that have financial struggles, that we see people that we just can tell that there's something going on in their life, that we have the love of God and compassion on humanity, and we reach out to them, and we just show the love of God to them. So Lord, I pray that we're just baptized with fire today, baptized in the love of God, and everywhere that we go this week, we see people's lives radically changed because love so Lord over the next few moments we just ask that you speak to us do what you need to do and I declare every person that is here or watching online is just receives a touch from you today Father you give life you are love you bring light to the dark Give
let's just stand to our feet as we prepare to leave this morning. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for divine encounters with you this week. Come on, who wants that? Lord, I want you to meet me in my quiet time. I want you to meet me while I'm driving down the road. Lord, meet me in my office. Meet me in my car. Wherever I go, Lord, where can your presence not be with me? And that's what we invite you into, Holy Spirit. We just thank you. We just thank you for your goodness today. We just thank you for all that you are doing. We just thank you for encounters, Lord, and divine appointments, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we'll be at the right place at the right time doing exactly what you have in store for us. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we carry to this world. And Lord, I pray that you would use our hands. Ask the Lord, Lord, use my hands to do your work, Lord. Use my feet to go where you want me to go, Lord. Use my lips to say what you want me to say, Lord. Use my encouragement, Lord. Use whatever you've given me, Lord, to bring your kingdom to earth. And we just thank you, Lord, for an activation of the gifts today. Come on, if you want to be activated, Lord, activate those gifts today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of miracles. We thank you, Lord, for signs and wonders. We thank you for the gift of healing. We thank you for the gifts of prophecy, Lord. We thank you for all of those gifts of interpretation, Lord. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us freely as your children today. Thank you, Lord. And Father, if there's anyone in the room who needs to know you or anyone listening to my voice who needs to receive you, that they've not yet received the love of God, that they've not asked you to come into their hearts today, just ask him wherever you are. It's that simple. Holy Spirit, would you go and visit homes and lives all over our nation today and the nations of the world? Ask him to come in and forgive you of your sins. And he will. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from unrighteousness. And we thank you for that today, Lord. We honor you and we bless you. And I ask for your protection and your angels to be all around us today, Lord. We thank you for watching over your children, Lord. We thank you that we are the apple of your eye. And I ask you to bless my friends today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. But the king of my heart.